Hi there, welcome to another Sunday with Sarah. I'm Sarah Baldwin, Waldorf teacher, author and owner of Bella Luna Toys. And today I'm here to dispel maybe one of the biggest myths you may have heard about Waldorf education that Waldorf kids can't read. Um, I'm here to tell you that is not true and to tell you a little bit more about how reading is approached in Waldorf education. Now it's true that Waldorf has, um, kindergartens, nurseries, don't teach academic skills. They don't formally teach reading and writing. That's not introduced until first grade. That's also when numbers and, and math lessons are introduced. But in the early years, they are developing so many pre-reading skills and language skills. Um, children in a Waldorf preschool environment nursery or kindergarten, they're hearing verses, they're learning songs, they're hearing stories and fairy tales in their original language, not watered down or simplified. They're hearing rich language and they're hearing it repeated over and over. They might hear the same story every day for a week or two weeks and repeating a circle play with the same songs and verses until they really memorize them and learn those by heart and they are building their vocabularies. So if you meet um, a Waldorf kindergarten student and a public school counterpart, you might notice that the child from the Waldorf school, who may not be reading any words yet, has a very advanced vocabulary and, and spoken language skills. And um, in, I was a former Waldorf kindergarten teacher. One of the ways we approached math, every day we were counting, we were cooking, we were preparing snack and lunches every day. So we're practicing counting by measuring or how many times we stir the batter, um, counting how many places we're gonna set out when we're setting the table. So they're building these skills in a way that's very natural, very experiential for real world purposes and not just abstract numbers. A young child trying to introduce the abstract symbols of letters and numbers, often their minds aren't really ready for that and they really don't understand in the, in the same way if they're counting for a real purpose or finding joy in stories and song. And so uh, when they do get to first grade, letters are introduced in a very imaginative way, a very living way through stories. When they're learning to, to write a letter, the letter, for example, M for mountain would become a, a picture of a mountain. And um, so it's introduced more slowly and allowed to unfold at a natural pace. So one thing to keep in mind is children's minds, brains are all wired differently. And some children uh, are wired to learn to read early. And others might be building their physical skills um, and, and that the coding that's required, decoding um, ability of the brain might come later. Uh, so children are building, or they, other children are building their fine motor skills. And most children under the age of seven will be more advanced in one area and less in others. Around the age of seven, all those different areas should be more or less caught up. So Rudolf Steiner, the founder of Waldorf Education, believed around seven or the year the child is turning seven, between six and seven, is the ideal time to start first grade and start introducing that kind of academic learning. It's also a time under the age of seven, children need to be moving. They are developing their brains through movement, through large motor movement, which means climbing trees or climbing rocks, running and jumping and swinging. That's all building their brains, which is all gonna help them learn later when they get to first grade. Um, so a lot of children, whose brains are not yet ready to do that decoding work that, that's required when you learn to read, 
they can get really frustrated when reading is introduced too early before they're ready. It can turn them off to reading. It can turn them off for a lifetime where they think reading is a chore and not fun. So when you just allow it to unfold naturally when the child is ready, we, we don't give them walking lessons and yet somehow children learn to walk, although at very different ages. Some might work, walk at eight months and others maybe not till 18 months. And it, it has no bearing on their intellectual ability um, or how bright they are. Um, but by third grade, most children in a Waldorf school should be reading um, pretty well. Um, I always give the example of my two children. I had my older son, Harper, really didn't start to read fluently until middle of third grade. My younger son, William, taught himself. Nobody taught him. He was just um, started reading one day. And both were OK with their Waldorf teachers. Uh, it's a myth to think that teachers would discourage a child from reading. When it happens, it happens. Um, all that said, there are some children with learning disabilities and, and could have dyslexia or other things interfering with reading. So when they do get to grade school, it is, it's important to keep an eye on it and to be in touch with a child's teacher or if you're homeschooling, to pay attention yourself. And if by third grade they're still struggling, uh, you would want to consult with a learning specialist or a reading specialist um, for analysis because the earlier a problem like dyslexia is diagnosed, the more that can be done um, to, to help the child learning. Um, but I can assure you that Waldorf schools are not anti-reading and we're not anti-books. Um, both the children of mine I told you about, even though they learned to read at very different ages, both grew up to be very voracious readers and um, did very well in high school and scored very high on their SATs. Um, I, like a lot of parents, was really worried when they were, their cousins were their age and reading way ahead of them. But I'm here to tell you to relax and uh, let it happen when it happens. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, if you want to learn more about Waldorf education or parenting, about the importance of imaginative play, and I'm here to answer your questions. If you have any questions about this video or any other topics, please email them to sundaywithsarah at bellalunatoys.com, and I'll do my best to answer them in a future video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.